Can I still use the Google Earth Live link? The answer is yes, you can. So in my Imagine Viewer right now, I have the worldview image that I have orthorectified. And I am going to open up Google Earth Pro. And the version of Google Earth that I have, once it opens, is 7.3.25776 for 64-bit. Once I have Google Earth Pro open, I can select the Google Earth tab on Erdas Imagine, connect to Google Earth, and once I connect to Google Earth, I can see all of the other icons become enabled. So I can match Google Earth to my view or drive to my location. And in Google Earth, then I will see the link, and we're near Tampa, Florida, in which I have both my view and imagine as well as Google Earth displayed. So yes, the Google Earth Live Link still works if you have the latest version of Imagine as well as the latest version of Google Earth Pro. How can I toggle between the side view profile and the front view profile when viewing point cloud data? Well, first let's open a point cloud in Erdas Imagine. I'm going to find a .las, a last data set, and click OK. Once the B last file displays, I'll see a new tab at the top called Point Cloud. This is a contextual tab, and Imagine knows what data type I've placed into the viewer and will bring forth that type of functionality that I need to work with my Point Cloud layer. You can see here this Point Cloud layer is colored by elevation, so the points from highest to lowest are colored in a specific gradient. If you've got classification associated with your point cloud, you can display the colors through the classification. You can also, if you've got first, second, third, last returns, you can also display and color by that as well. So lots of different options to display your two-dimensional point cloud. Let's zoom in here and also display this as a different style or color gradient. And then from here, I can also view this in 3D. This gives me a different perspective so I can really see what I'm looking at in a three-dimensional perspective. And we look to see that this particular data set has a power corridor through it. So I may be interested in this power corridor to understand where vegetation may be encroaching on my power lines. So from here, what I'd like to do is create a profile so that I can move along the profile and then study the areas from side view and front view and perhaps take some measurements. So let's close the 3D view and let's do a polyline profile. So there's a rectangle and polyline. We'll choose polyline. My cursor turns to a cross here and I can choose to create a polyline or you can also import a polyline at this point as well. Next, we'll see that I have an overall profile, which gives me the view from the beginning of the profile here to the end, and then also a sideways view and a frontways view. And then the next thing I can do is click start to start moving down the profile as well as begin speeding up or slowing down based on the thumbwheel or the incremental um, buttons. So we can move along the profile until we get to something interesting, and then we can, of course, stop or pause the profile. And then we can take any measurements that may be appropriate from trees or vegetation that may be close to uh, different parts of my power lines and may cause issues and power lines to come down and then therefore power outages. So this is an important and very nice utility for um, utility companies and anyone else who's really looking for uh, looking at point cloud data to be able to take some specific measurements. Okay, so we can come in here and measure 
um, different things from top to bottom. So we could measure this as well. So cell phone towers, buildings, um, whatever you would like. You can switch then between the different profiles up here at the top by simply turning them on and off to look at which of the profiles are important to you and which measurements you need to take from which perspective. And that is how you turn on and off the side view and front view profile and switch them back and forth when viewing point cloud data.